Hey everyone, it has been a while since I've created any digital sketching tutorial using the app concepts. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I created this sketch on location. This is the Asian Civilization Museum here in Singapore and I sketched this in 30 minutes. So you can see the style is very loose and sketchy. If you have not heard of concepts before, it's basically a drawing app that uses vector and it features an infinite canvas. So this app is great for drawing really wide scenes. If you want to learn more about using concepts, you can check out the many free tutorials that I have created on my YouTube channel. The links are in the video description below. So that's how the museum looks. And unfortunately, I did not take a reference photo from the angle that I drew. This is how the museum looks from this angle that shows the shadow side. So I was actually sketching from the other side that did not show the shadows. All right, let's look at my workflow. So here you can see two template files, the ink template and the pencil template. Now these are actually blank files with the tools or brushes already saved. So this is a very good shortcut that can help you save time. So each time I want to draw with all the brushes that I usually use. If I want to use the colors that I usually use, I will just duplicate the template file and all those brushes and colors are already there. For this sketch, I'm using the watercolor B4 brush from the purchase brush pack called Waterfoo. And in this brush pack, there are many wonderful brushes, so it's really worth the money. And the thing about concepts is it doesn't handle pressure sensitivity as well compared to other apps like Procreate or Infinite Painter or Clip Studio. The pressure sensitivity here is, um, it's not as sensitive. So uh, it's sometimes kind of difficult to create a uh, very precise um, width when you're applying pressure. But I like it this way because um, this gives you that extra loose and sketchy uh, look. I started by drawing the museum first and I have already visualized a vanishing point on the canvas. So the diagonal lines from the museum are actually converging at that vanishing point. Next, I drew the balls and other objects around the museum. And I pay very special attention to the distance between the objects and also the proportion. So when you are drawing from observation, you should always be checking the proportion and also the distance between uh, objects. That will make your sketch look more accurate. And even if your sketch is very stylized like the one that I am um, drawing, at a glance, uh, if you show someone who knows how this museum looks, he or she will be able to recognize the building uh, even if there is even if there isn't much details or even if the sketch is really loose and sketchy notice how most of the lines have uniform thickness except for the lines where i press down harder to get the thicker lines so that's the limitation of concepts uh, for some reason this app is not great at detecting minor changes with pressure when drawing thin lines. Uh, even though the pen that I'm using, the Apple Pencil, is capable of detecting minor changes with pressure when drawing with uh, minimal pressure. When sketching on location, I'm always looking for a scene that has overlapping elements. So here you can see the trees overlap the museum. We have the reflective balls that are overlapping the museum and the museum will overlap some trees behind in the background which I'm currently drawing right now and the trees will overlap some buildings and the skyscrapers behind. So when you have foreground and background element it's going to make your scene look more dimensional. Oh by the way I forgot to mention earlier that I actually have some courses on drawing with concepts on Skillshare and also Gumroad. So if you guys want to learn more about concepts in greater detail, you can check out those courses. 
So now I am drawing the skyscrapers behind and I actually wanted to draw them with thinner lines but uh, if I want to draw them with thinner lines I cannot just apply minimal pressure. I have to you know uh, change the brush size manually because the app is not that sensitive with pressure. Okay so by drawing the skyscrapers now I have really tall buildings and when you have big and small elements in your scene it will give you this um, illusion of scale so now the museum will look smaller because there are taller buildings beside so while sketching this i had someone came up to me and said oh did you draw that i guess so since you caught me drawing <laughs> Yeah, so it's unavoidable to have people uh, walking up to you, um, especially walking behind you, looking over your shoulders to see what you are doing, unless you are seated with your back against the wall. Anyway, uh, even if you feel self-conscious uh, with urban sketching, you will learn to be less self-conscious and you will definitely feel more confident when you sketch more uh, while you're outdoors. Do check out the many urban sketching videos that I have created over the years on my other YouTube channel. So right now I am coloring. I have the color layer below the line art and I'm using the fill brush. So I'm actually drawing shapes and this allows me to color really quickly. So the two styles that I like to use with this app is this uh, ink and solid color or flat coloring style. The other style that I like is the pencil and uh, pastel style, which creates the, you know, the coloring pencil effect. Yeah, I like these two styles. So depending on the subject matter, I may choose one style over the other. And with this app, um, which is actually on the iPad, they have this feature where you can choose a color and there will be a color palette that will show you uh, different variations of that color uh, at different tonal values. So this allows me to select a darker green to paint the shadows. The downside of this app is there is no multiply mode. There are no blending modes. So it is not possible for me to create a layer on top of the colors and multiply it and add shadows that way. The drawing workflow for concepts is quite different from other raster drawing apps due to the lack of certain features that are common with raster drawing apps. So the lack of blending mode is one example. So when it comes to coloring, the general technique is to color the big shapes first and then work your way down to smaller and smaller shapes. So I colored the trees, I also added grays to the larger areas, and then I colored the museum. And I've just added some uh, little areas of colors, the red color for the banners, and now I am coloring the skyscrapers behind. I have created several layers. So the trees are in the foreground, so that's the foreground layer, which is going to go on top. And I have the colors for the museum, which is going to be below the layer for the trees. And I have the skyscrapers also on um, their own layer. And later on, when I paint uh, the sky or color the sky, uh, the sky is going to be at the bottom layer. Now, the circles that you see are actually um, some art installation um, that is reflective. So the circles or the spheres are actually uh, reflecting light. So I am actually just uh, drawing the reflection and there are strong cast shadows as well beneath the spheres. Since this app features an infinite canvas, I can draw on and on. I can add more details and I will not run out of space. But there will come a point in time where I have to stop due to mental fatigue. So this sketch right now is not looking that balanced because I have the skyscrapers on the left, I have more line art 
on the left. So I want to make this sketch a bit more balanced, so I added trees on the right. And there are actually uh, trees in the scene uh, on the right side. So I try to draw as much details as I possibly can, and later on I can just choose uh, the composition or the frame to export to share my work online. So that's the nice thing about concepts. You can draw as much as you can, and later on you can choose to zoom into certain areas and export that particular uh, scene that close up. So this sketch is almost complete. I just need to add more shadows from this tree that I was under. And I need to add some clouds. So it's so easy to draw the clouds with the solid fill brush. And it is the solid fill brush that uh, creates this very stylized uh, look. Um, this uh, may look like some children book illustration style. Uh, it could be. One of the big differences when it comes to sketching on location versus sketching from a photo is when you sketch from a photo, the photo will have camera distortion. And usually when you take a photo of buildings and you point your camera up, um, the vertical lines near the edges of the photo will tilt in. But when you're sketching on location, the vertical lines for the buildings uh, will always remain vertical. So that's one quick way uh, you can tell whether a sketch was drawn from a photo reference or drawn on location. So most of the coloring is already done. Now I just need to you know, add more details. Uh, spot colors at certain areas just to suggest details. Now the front of the museum is actually in shade, but um, it's not that clear from this sketch. But at least I managed to get the cast shadows on the ground, so um, at a glance we know that this is a pretty sunny day. And there are areas of strong contrast. So now I'm going to create some windows on the skyscraper on the left side. And to do that, I am using the solid fill brush. So some uh, windows will be horizontal rectangles. Um, right now I'm drawing vertical rectangles. And I'm going to erase across the rectangles to create the smaller windows. So this is one quick shortcut that I use to draw small windows. And by the way, the windows are not actually representative of the windows that I see in real life. Um, those windows are just suggestions. If you look at the shorter skyscraper behind the tree there, you can see many of my lines are actually uh, drawn outside of the box. So um, yeah, that's sloppy, I guess. Or you can call it loose. It was really fun to sketch this. Anyway, this is not a serious piece of work, um, just sketching for fun. Um, sketching is a really fun activity. If you for some reason have not tried urban sketching before, I highly recommend you uh, try urban sketching. Just look for, the, look for your local urban sketchers uh, chapter and uh, see whether they have any outing and just go join um, their outing and sketch together. It's always more fun to sketch with friends and the uh, urban sketching community is huge. So chances are you are very likely to find a chapter or a group near your location, wherever you are. And now I just have to add the line art for the tree. Um, for this tree, I will not be coloring it, so it's just going to be line art. Um, sometimes you can create variation um, or contrast with black and white versus color, with detail versus less detail. And here I just want it to be line art overlapping the colors behind. And you can see me draw the white thing there. I think it's um, street lights. Anyway, uh, it's white, so it's using negative space to overlap the green behind. So this creates um, good 
uh, visual interest because so far I have been using black lines against white background or black lines against colors so it's good to have some negative shapes as well putting in the finishing touches now all right before you guys go if you want to learn more about digital sketching or urban sketching you can check out the many free courses that i have on my youtube channel or the paid courses that i have on skillshare and gumroad see you guys in the next video bye